Hello, everyone. I'm Sherwin V. Farnikan of the Examination, Recruitment, and Placement Office of the Civil Service Commission. Today, I will be, I will be discussing career service examination. And later on, let us uh, answer the question, why do we need to take examination when we enter government service? But before that, let me share to you a brief background. What is the Civil Service Commission? Well, the Civil Service Commission was uh, conferred the status of a de department by the Public Act Number 2260 as amended and elevated to a constitutional body by the 1973 Constitution. And then uh, in 1972, it was reorganized under PD-181. And again, it was uh, reorganized under Executive Order Number 181 in 1986. And then under Executive Order 292 or the 1987 Administrative Code, the Civil Service Commission is constitutionally mandated to promote moral, efficiency, integrity, responsiveness, progressiveness, and courtesy in the civil service. The Civil Service Commission is one of the three constitutional commissions of the Philippines with the responsibility over the civil service. Remember, we have uh, two other constitutional commissions under the Constitution. The other two, we have the Commission on Election and we have the Commission on Audit. So uh, the Civil Service Commission is tasked with overseeing the integrity of uh, government actions and processes. The Civil, Civil Service Commission has uh, 16 regional offices throughout the country. Now, what is our basis? Why do we need to take examination when we enter the government service or when you apply for government positions? Well, the basis is the 1987 Constitution. Under the law, it provides that appointments in the civil service shall be made only according to merit and fitness to be determined as far as practicable by competitive examinations. Other than this law, we have also the 1987 Administrative Code, which provides that the Civil Service Commission shall prescribe, amend, and enforce rules and regulations for carrying into effect the provisions of the Civil Service Law and pertinent laws. Also, under the same law, it provides that the CSC shall have the power to control, supervise, and coordinate civil service examinations. So that is the basis why do we need to take civil service examination when we enter the government service. Other than this law, we have also the Omnibus rules on appointments and other human resource actions. Under this rule, it defines the qualification standards. The qualification standards are the minimum and basic requirements for positions in the government in terms of uh, education, training, experience, civil service eligibility, physical fitness, and other qualities 
required for successful performance of duties of the position. Also, under this rule, it specifically provides that appointees to career service positions must meet the education, training, experience, eligibility, and competency requirements prescribed in the Qualification Standards Manual or the CSE approved Agency Qualification Standards or the position at the time of the issuance of the appointment. So there you have it. Let me emphasize the four qualification requirements, education, training, experience, eligibility, and competency requirements. Eligibility, which is the very basis of why we take the career service examination in entering government service. Moving on, uh, what are the kinds of examination being administered by the Civil Service Commission? Well, we have the eligibility exams, we have the non-eligibility exams, and other exams. Under the eligibility exams, we have career service and we have specialized examination. Under career service, we have professional examination, sub-professional examination, and the foreign service ex uh, officer examination. Under professional examination, uh, passers under this examination are entitled to certificate of professional eligibility. Such eligibility is appropriate to positions under first level and second level positions in the government, except those positions requiring licenses for practice of profession and other special eligibilities under special laws and CSE issuances. On the other hand, the subprofessional uh, examination, the passers under this uh, examination are in also entitled to subprofessional eligibility. Such eligibility are, is appropriate to positions under first level positions in the government, except for positions requiring uh, licenses for practice of profession or special eligibilities under special laws or CSE issuances. The third one, which is the foreign service officer uh, examination. This is uh, given to foreign service officers or uh, positions under the Department of uh, Foreign Affairs. The foreign service officer eligibility is equivalent to professional eligibility. Such eligibility is also appropriate to first and second level positions in the government, except to positions requiring licenses for practice of profession or special uh, Positions requiring special eligibilities under special laws and CC issuances. So that's the career service uh, examination. The next one is the specialized examinations. These examinations are given to specific uh, uh, posi uh, positions or positions or uh, agencies. For the penology officer exam, uh, this is given to those uh, uh, who are aiming to become uh, 
Penology Officer under the Bureau of Jail Management and Penology. The Fire Officer examination is also given to those uh, under the Bureau of Fire Protection who are aiming to become Fire Officer uh, or aiming to apply for Fire Officer positions. The other one is the basic competency on local treasury examination. This uh, examination is given to uh, the uh, uh, those uh, the, to the, the employees of the Bureau of uh, Local Government Finance who are aiming to become treasurer or assistant treasurer of the local government units. And the other, the last one is the stenographer exam. This is given to, uh, to our stenographers or those uh, uh, aiming to become, uh, to apply for stenographer position. The, Next one is the non-eligibility examinations. Uh, we have uh, three types of uh, exam being given under this uh, 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 examination. We have uh, intermediate competency on local treasury exam. The next one is we have pre-employment and promotional examination. The other one is ethics-oriented personality test. The intermediate competency on local treasury exam, the uh, examinees under these uh, examinations are the passers of basic competency on local treasury exam. So again, this uh, examination is given to the employees uh, under uh, the uh, Bureau of Local Government in Finance who are aiming to apply for treasurer or assistant treasurer in the local government units. The other two, which is the pre-employment and promotional examination, uh, these are given to the agencies uh, who want to uh, screen their applicants. Also, uh, the ethics-oriented personality test is also given to uh, any requesting agencies who wish to administer such type of uh, test to their employees. We also have the other uh, examinations uh, being administered by the CSE. Uh, we have the pre-qualifying test for the certification on leadership and management program. The CIPRO or the certification on leadership management program are uh, intended for uh, uh, employees who are aiming to apply for division chief. However, the lack education qualification requirement. So uh, the, if they want to apply for uh, the division chief position and they lack uh, education uh, qualification, they may apply under this program. And uh, uh, for the competency assessment under this program, we conduct examination under this uh, program. Again, we also administered written tests for the leadership and management certification program. So these are the uh, types of examinations being administered by the Civil Service Commission. Moving on, uh, how do we administer career service examination? What are the modes of taking the tests? 
we have two modes. The first one is uh, the pen and paper test. This is uh, given through uh, to, this is given by schedule. Uh, every year we issue examination schedule. And this is being done through pen and paper. The other one, uh, we have the computer-based test or the computer examination system or the COMEX, both for professional and sub-professional. The COMEX is administered by our C, uh, regional offices. Uh, for our uh, applicants or those who want or wish to take the comments, they have or they are required to register or create account in the COMEX website. After creating their account, uh, notices will be received through their account once a schedule has been opened for Omex examination. So for that, for any for the details or uh, more details about the conduct of uh, computerized examination, we advise our examinees to coordinate with our regional offices. However, let me emphasize that under Omex we have limited slots only. That is the limitation or challenge in COMEX. So uh, our, uh, we require our examiners to apply for reservation before you take the examination you have to uh, apply for slot reservation. Our policy under COMEX is first come, first serve. So those who were able to reserve uh, first are the one who will be accommodated in the COMEX. Okay. Uh, moving on, we go to the qualification and admission requirements in career service examination. Uh, applicants must be Filipino citizen. Second, our applicant must at least be 18 years old on the date of the filing of application. The third one, our applicant must be of good moral character. Fourth, uh, applicant must not been or have not been convicted by final judgment of an offense or crime involving moral torpitude or disgraceful or immoral conduct, dishonesty, examination, irregularity, drunkenness, or addiction to drugs. Fifth, applicant must not have been dishonorably discharged from military service or dismissed for a cause from any civilian position in the government. And last, the applicant must not have taken the same level of career service examination either through pen and paper test or computerized examination within three months before the date of examination. So those are the qualification requirements in taking examination. Okay, what are the applic application requirements? Uh, first, you must have to accomplish an application form. The, we, the CS form number 100 or the application form is uh, uploaded in our CSE website. So our applicants can download such form 
if they wish to apply for uh, CS or career service examination. Other than the application form, uh, the applicant must also attach four pieces of identical ID pictures with the following specifications. First, must be passport size. The picture must be colored with white background. Third, the picture must be taken within three months prior to filing of application. Fourth, the picture must be printed on good quality photo paper. That is, the photo does not peel off. Fifth, the picture must be taken in standard close-up shot from shoulder level up, up with the head and face occupying at least 80% of the picture and with the name tag position at approximately one inch or 2.54 centimeter below the chin. Next, the picture must be taken in bare face, meaning no eyeglasses, no colored contact lens, no headdress, no bandana, or any other accessories that may cover the facial features. Other thing, the facial features must not be computer enhanced. Seven, the picture must show the left and right ears of the applicant. Eight, the picture must, must uh, be taken in full face view directly facing the camera. Other one, with, the picture must be with neutral facial expression and both eyes open. And the picture must have handwritten, not computer generated name tag. The name tag must be legibly showing the signature of a printed name, full name, which includes given name, middle name, or middle initial, if any, the last name, the extension name, if any. So other than the picture, the applicant must also present a valid ID. The, the applicant must present any of the following accepted ID cards. Number one, driver's license or temporary driver's license. Number two, passport. Third, PRC license or SSID, fifth, GSIS ID, sixth, voter's ID or voter certification, seventh, BIR or taxpayer's ID, the ATM type or the team card type with picture. Next, field ID or field health ID. The, bear, uh, the bearer, bearer's name must be with clear picture, signature, and field health number. Next one, company or, or office ID. Also, applicant may also show school ID, police clearance, or police clearance certificate with picture, postal ID, barangay ID, NBI clearance, Siemens book, or the house development uh, mortgage fund transaction ID, or the HDMF uh, transaction ID, PWD ID, Solo parent ID, senior citizens ID, 
CSC eligibility card or Philippine identification card issued by the PSA or the PIL ID. So that that uh, that is our uh, requirement in filing applications. Now we go now to the coverage of uh, uh, examination. First, for professional examination, the coverage is composed of the following areas. Verbal ability, analytical ability, numerical ability, and general information on the Philippine Constitution, Code of Conduct and Ethical Standard for Public Officials and Employees, or RA 6712, Peace and Human Rights Issues and Concepts, and Environment Management and Protection. The examination for professional uh, Examination is composed of uh, 170 items with the first 20 items pertaining to EDQ or the examinee descriptive questionnaire, which uh, examinees are required to answer. The examinees have three hours and 10 minutes to finish the professional level examination. So that's the scope or coverage for professional examination. Next, for the sub-professional examination, the coverage are as follows. We have also verbal ability, numerical ability, clerical ability, and general information on the Philippine Constitution, Code of Conduct and Ethical Standards for Public Officials and Employees, peace and human rights issues and concepts, and environment management and protection. For uh, sub-professional examination, it is composed of uh, 165 items with the first 20 items pertaining to the uh, EDQ, which examinees are also required to answer. The examinees have two hours and 40 minutes to finish the sub-professional examination. So uh, those are the uh, coverage for professional and sub-professional examination. We go now to fire officer examination. Uh, remember, uh, this uh, examination is given to those uh, who want to become fire officer. So the coverage under the, uh, for this examination, we have general ability on verbal, analytical, and numerical, and specialized areas on fire suppression, fire safety, and prevention, fire investigation, and administrative matters. The examination uh, is consists of 160 items. The first 10 items pertains to the examinee descriptive questions, which uh, examinees are required to answer. The examinees have three hours and five minutes to finish the test. The next one is the penology officer examination for those uh, uh, applicants who wish to apply for penology officer under the Bureau of Jail Management and Penology. So uh, under this examination, uh, uh, the coverage also is uh, general ability on verbal, analytical, and numerical, and specialized areas on jail management concepts and applications, custodial concepts and applications, inmates welfare and development programs, and the Bureau of Jail Management and Penology Administrative Matters. 
The examination uh, consists of 160 items. The first 10 items pertain to EDQ also, which examinees are required to answer. Examinees have also three hours and five minutes to finish the test. For career service examination for foreign service officers, uh, the coverage is uh, verbal ability, analytical ability, numerical ability, and managerial ability. The, cons the examination consists of 160 items. The first 10 items pertain to the EDQ, which examinees are required to answer. Examinees have also three hours and five minutes to finish the test. For the basic competency on local treasury examination, uh, the coverage is uh, composed of uh, general ability on verbal, analytical, leadership and management, and specialized areas such as mobilization of resources, management of local treasury services, safekeeping of local funds and records, and others. The examination consists of 180 items. The first 10 items pertain to EDQ, and the examinees have three hours and 30 minutes to finish the test. So that's for BCLTE or the basic competency on local treasury examination. So there you have it. So that's the uh, career service examination. For further details on uh, civil service examination or career service examination, we advise our examinees to visit our website at www.csc.gov.ph or for any queries, you may also call the Examination Recruitment and Placement Office at uh, 8931-8163. Also, uh, if you wish, you can also coordinate or call directly our regional offices. The contact details of our regional offices is uh, uh, provided under our C uh, or provided in the CSC website also. So uh, I wish uh, I uh, have uh, shared to you some uh, important details on career service examination. So to our uh, future uh, uh, public uh, servants, uh, good luck in taking. Good luck in taking civil service examination. Good day. Thank you.